I started cultivating jute at the age of 12. In those days, jute was an important crop here. Then jute cultivation became less important. Rice was the priority, and the focus shifted from jute to plastic. That could be about to change. Afaz and Ayub Akhand cultivate a fiber that could make the world a better place. Ayub has believed in this possibility ever since his daughter told him that jute could be turned into a material that feels and behaves like plastic, but is environmentally friendly. I read an article on uh, Shonali Bags. It is invented uh, by a Bangladeshi scientist. Uh, it is a biodegrade uh, bioplastic. Ayub and his uncle Afaz farm the natural fiber according to a centuries-old tradition. Could this painstaking process provide the fiber of the future? Northern Bangladesh, Bogura district. Six o'clock in the morning. An early start to avoid the summer heat. Yesterday, temperatures reached 45 degrees Celsius. Afaz sowed this jute in March. Now, it's harvest time. At the end of the Bengali month of Chuitro, we sow the seeds. Four months later, in the month of Ashar, we harvest. We then plant other crops on the same soil, such as aubergines or potatoes. We use dried jute sticks for many purposes. They bring in the most money. We use them as climbing aids in vegetable fields or for the walls of houses. Today, however, this is becoming obsolete as bricks are used instead of jute. Bangladesh is a small country, but its farmers count among the world's largest jute producers. Afaz lives in the village of Hisli. He is one of the wealthier people in the village. His annual income, he says, is the equivalent of 5,000 euros. Afaz has four sons. One is also a farmer, another one is a driver. One is living in Malaysia as a migrant worker and the other is an engineer. I am 75 years old. When Afaz was young, the slogan, use jute, not plastic, handmade in Bangladesh, was popular in parts of Europe. But Afaz says he's never heard of it. In the 1980s, the jute bag from Bangladesh became a symbol of the environmental movement. Back then, it was known as a scratchy, resilient natural material. Use jute, not plastic, was a rallying cry. Now, the fight against plastic is more urgent than ever. In the village of Hisli, scrap metal and plastic are collected for recycling. People are paid in edible nuts. Could jute eventually replace plastic? Who are the people who cultivate the plant now? What role does jute play for them? Overall, jute cultivation has advantages. We hardly earned anything from rice this year. But we still grow rice for our own consumption. And we feed the rice straw to the cattle.
The price farmers receive for jute fluctuates considerably. Some years, proceeds from sales fail to cover production costs. The government is trying to counteract this. The market price is high right now. Farmers are interested again. And we want to support them. In the current season, our department has provided them with seeds and fertilizer free of charge. This creates incentives. The farmers have to invest less and can make a bigger profit. My name is Tuli. I'm working as an assistant officer at the Department of Agriculture Extension, Gabtoli Bogura. The fiber feels thick and strong. It will be a good yield this year. The harvested jute stalks are left to lie in the field for three days until all the leaves have fallen off. What follows is the unpleasant part. The green stalks must rot. The musty water attracts insects and bacteria that are good for the jute and help the fermentation of the plant. But it's bad for human skin and causes itching, says Afaz. Today, it is bearable. And, says Afaz, he's used to it anyway. Other challenges are more daunting. I like growing jute, especially the jute sticks. They sell very well and don't require much work. But when it's too dry, we have a problem rotting the green jute sticks. In the past, it was easier. We used to do it everywhere, in water holes and rivers. There's a river nearby, but now it doesn't have enough water. So now we use ponds that are normally used for fish farming. I have a pond close to Ayub's pond. Climate change is making everything harder. Extreme weather conditions are disrupting ecosystems throughout South Asia, says Tulli. And jute farmers feel the effects firsthand. My ancestors already knew that we have very loamy soil here. It only needs a little rain to retain moisture. On sandy soil, the jute plant would not survive more than 10 days without rain. But that type of soil is rare here. Here, it rains fairly reliably every 15 to 30 days in summer. So our jute is not damaged. Unlike cotton or rice, which need constant water, jute does not require artificial irrigation. Afaz says that he'd never heard of a biodegradable plastic-like material made from jute until Ayub's daughter told him about it. He uses a conventional plastic sheet to protect his plants. Hey, 
I put the plastic sheet on top to prevent the mud from getting in and sticking to the fibers. Depending on the quality of the fibers, the jute has to soak in water for 12 to 15 days so that it starts to rot. If the plant was already very ripe when it was harvested, I can take it out again after just 8 to 10 days. In Ayub's pond, right next door, the jute sticks are almost ready. Over time, the fibers can be removed from the stem by applying light pressure. But this one isn't ready yet. I still have to press too hard. I think it'll take another four or five days. In Hisley, Ayub is known as the model farmer. He grows everything from oranges to jute. And his family makes him proud. His daughter Atiya hopes to go to university. In my country, people think farming is the uh, male things, not the uh, females uh, do this. And I want to study, uh, study the higher level and abroad country, uh, the outsider of country. Atia would not want to become a jute farmer, even if she could. The jute, uh, now the jute farming is not, not every people, every farmers are uh, cultivated jutes. Because uh, the uh, jute mills, Bangladesh jute mills are off, so they don't uh, any, uh, they don't uh, any buyers to buy, sell their jutes. So many people are leave the cultivate jutes and it is a uh, shortage of canals, they wash, uh, the jutes are washed to uh, separate the fibers. There is shortage of canals, people are uh, the, uh, oh, yeah, their canals and uh, building, their, uh, building their house, their uh, construction, mills, factories. Jute used to be very important for Bangladesh, says Atiya, pulling out an old banknote. I bring it because uh, the symbol, the symbol, the farmer are uh, culti the farmer are separate fiber from the jute and the pat curry, they are separate the two and it is the, our national crops, you know. So the note has the symbol, symbolize these things, so I bring it for you. The jute fiber is color that is, uh, that is washed from river water that is golden color, golden sh shonali ash. We Bangla call shonali ash, that is golden fiber. Uh, and it is a very, it is a, it is our national crops because it's, uh, we export the other countries and we get dollars, in the currency. Until the middle of the 20th century, jute was the world's most important textile fiber after cotton. To this day, most of the world's jute production still comes from this region. Alluvial soil, a climate that is humid and hot. Jute has been harvested and processed here for centuries. The British colonial rulers took the jute grown here and sold it all over the world. The highest quality fibers have a golden color. These are said to grow best near rivers. That's why many jute farmers live by rivers, or in the middle of rivers, on islands called chars. The char baita lies in the middle of the Jamuna River which originates in the Himalayas as the Brahmaputra River. Wow. 
Aminul Islam is a jute farmer here. Hey, brother. Did you also plant jute this season? No, not this year. I love life on the island, but I live on the mainland because of the robbers and goons. Every day I come out here in the morning and leave in the evening. I love the nature here. The air is fresh and calming. There's so much to do on the island, so many opportunities. On the mainland, I have no land and nothing to work with. River pirates. That's what Aminul calls the people who attacked and seriously injured his brother. He shows us the scars from the knife wounds. He tells us that the pirates stole his cows. Crime is not the only thing that makes life hard on the chars. In the rainy season, it floods over twice. So we move the cows to the mainland on boats. Within two or three days, everything here is underwater. Then we climb up to the tin roof of the house and lay out wooden planks. And we just live up there. Aminul shows how high the water reached in recent years. Some chars even disappear completely for a time. 200 people live on this river island, without electricity or solid ground under their feet. Their jute plants are resilient too. They can withstand flooding for a good two weeks. But even the robust jute plants have their limits. The jute back there is totally ruined. Because of the extreme flooding, we couldn't harvest quickly enough. And they died. The flood lasted for almost three weeks. The leaves, everything was ruined. There are no fibers. When the water comes and the plant remains underwater for too long, it turns black and is no good. Only the golden, shimmering fibers are really worth anything. Even if the plants are only half submerged with water, the fibers that come out are of low quality. We get a lower price on the market because they are discolored or even black. To prevent this, jute farmers on the chars have devised a system that Aminul is proud of. Leaving the island is not an option. They have nothing on the mainland. The river is both a curse and a blessing for the jute plants. The water nourishes them with minerals, but threatens them with mud. The river water is murky. The stream carries a lot of soil and clay, and these substances stick to the jute fibers, degrading quality and causing the jute to blacken. However, if the river water is channeled into a pond or a canal where the water is clear and fresh, the jute remains undamaged and retains its golden color. So, they have created artificial canals and water holes.
This is water that comes from the river. All the impurities in the mud have settled to the bottom of the water hole. So the water is clear, and that's how you can still get the golden color. Otherwise, there's no chance of getting good quality fibers. Yet another problem is impacting the Baita River Island. If there's too much plastic around, then it harms the crops. So we gather it and burn it. That solves the problem. Now people want to use less plastic. In the past, bags were made out of jute. Now we're going back to jute shopping bags, sacks, etc. People are fed up with plastic. Two hundred kilometers downstream, there are people who want to solve the plastic problem with the help of jute. In the capital, Dhaka, scientists are working on the Shonali bag project. Translating as the golden bag, it looks and feels like a plastic bag, but is made from cellulose derived from jute. It's the invention of Bangladeshi scientist Dr. Mubarak Ahmed Khan. Protective suits and masks have also been produced using this new bioplastic. The main raw material is dried jute fiber. Then we find the cellulose because the main ingredient of the shonali bag is cellulose. There we made this cellulose uh, from uh, jute caddis. Then we put into the reaction tank. That reaction tanks, we have to set, uh, set up the temperature, pressure and time for the full reaction. And then we found these types of solution. The exact formula is a secret. And, says Dr. Khan, the Shonali bag has suffered some setbacks. It was just about to go into mass production when the COVID pandemic hit. Sewing bags from this jute polymer is also still a problem. The producers don't have access to the right machines. Using jute for fiber reinforced composites has already been proven to work. Dr. Khan has been experimenting with the material for years. His jute reinforced polymer mixture also has a name, jutin. Jutin uh, is a composite material, so that is uh, good for car bodies. Now, and there's France and German, in, as, as well as uh, in uh, uh, Switzerland also. They're making some parts uh, with the uh, flux fiber reinforced composite. So the property of uh, flux is better than jute in some extent. But uh, flux, the production of flux is very limited in some countries. And the price is three times or four times higher than that of jute. Sometimes. Uh, it's I, I just a uh, good quality flux is about 10 times higher than the jute. So in that case, jute is the potential candidate for making the composite. I have to do something. Every scientist has the mind, the destination, what I want to go there. That is the destination. So lastly, I want to say why I'm using on jute. Why? Because jute is a really incredible plant. Because it contains 70% cellulose. You cannot find any tree or crops in all over the world which contain 70%. Well, there are some plants, but it's not plenty. It's not cultivated to anybody. But jute is a seasonal crop in Bangladesh. So it is the harvesting time is 110 days. 
on the other hand one tree contain 30% cellulose on average but it takes 10 to 15 years to mature This is plastic, polythene. So you can see the pattern of burning. This is only back. It is just like a paper or cloth. No petrol here. This is the conclusive and immediate proof of biodegradability. This is natural product, you see. This is ash. It sounds like the perfect fiber. So why hasn't the environmentally friendly jute revolution happened by now? And what does the government, which commissioned the Shonali bag experiment, make of this? We asked Mohammed Abul Kalam at the Ministry of Textiles and Jute. This is absolutely a novel idea, and uh, Dr. Uh, Mubarak Ahmad Khan is working on that. You, you already know, and you already talked to him. Uh, but the, uh, there are some issues, actually, uh, that need to be uh, addressed uh, before going for the mass production. Kind of uh, uh, the costing things, there are costing, of course, how much actually it costs. That is one issue, um, because uh, people now get actually plastic uh, bags or polythene bags very cheaply, almost uh, at no cost. So yeah, that is one, one issue actually. There is a stiff competition with the, this plastic or polythene bags. Though it is a very good product, but the plastic community is very, very strong. $3.5 trillion business every year for the single-use shopping bag. So they are not easily allow you to enter the market. Plastics, an industry that is blocking jute farmers' expansion and increasingly jeopardizing their very existence. The weekly meeting of the jute farmers of Hisley. Two of Afaz's brothers are also here today. They tell us that plastic causes a lot of damage to their crops. This plastic is very harmful. When it burns, sticky, dangerous residues remain in the soil. Jute, on the other hand, decomposes easily, and it fertilizes the soil. Plastic takes years to decompose. And when we plant rice, it no longer grows well if the soil is poisoned. They would be glad to grow more jute and thus produce more natural fibers. But conditions have to improve. Many people, including Ayub's uncle Haidar, are unhappy. That's what we want. We also think about it all the time. Jute is really profitable. But we simply don't have any more water holes where we can leave the stalks to rot. It's a real crisis. There are so many things we could do. We used to have more of them. Now they are leased by the government to people who are farming fish. We are not allowed to plant or rot our jute there. Wherever there is water, be it ditches or canals, now they are all used for fish farming. Our hands are tied. That's why they have created their own artificial ponds. These experienced farmers make the hard work look easy. Having rubbed mineral oil on his body before getting into the stinking water to relieve the itching, 
Ayub loosens the jute fibers by hitting the stems. And this is how you wind it up. Although the cultivation process is tiring, jute has many benefits. When it is young, we can eat it. Once we've extracted the fibers, we make money from it. We use dry jute sticks as firewood. All this makes up for the hard labor. So even though jute cultivation is painful, it brings us lots of benefits. When jute is still very young, its leaves are used in cooking and are very healthy, Ayub's wife Alo says. The green vegetables are full of vitamins, healthy, and jute leaves ensure that we build up our immune system. Jute has changed our luck since it's currently being sold at a good market price. It costs less to produce compared with other crops. We can recover the production expenses by selling the dried stocks alone. If I grow jute in a field, I can earn two and a half times more than what I would earn with rice. That's why jute cultivation is a profitable crop for us farmers. It takes three days for the jute bundles to dry in the sun. Ayub and Afaz then sell them to wholesalers who pick them up directly in Hisli. To sell their jute, many farmers travel to the small town of Shonatola. It's one of the largest jute markets in the region. The highest price for a kilo of jute today is 80 taka, they say. That's about three quarters of a dollar. Six, six, seven, seven. Count slowly. Wholesalers buy jute, then deliver it to the mills. Hey, we have to make five kilos less. There are three categories of jutes, first, second, and third rate quality. That determines the price I pay. I buy a good quality jute at a high price. This is medium quality. Get me the good one. That is low quality. What is the difference? High quality. Here, first class, the best. It's tight, everything is okay. Body clear. Clean, soft, smooth. Body clear. This one is rough, very different. It's from the floods. 
বন্য হচ্ছিল যার জন্য এরকম হয়ে গেছে Wholesalers often store the jute in warehouses in order to increase demand from the mills and thus drive up the price. In recent years, the government has closed down several jute mills, which were said to be unprofitable. Tens of thousands were left unemployed. There are plans to modernize the industry, according to the ministry. The privately owned Hassan Ali Jute Mill in Bagura sources jute from all over the country and produces it in three shifts, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The conditions are bad. The temperatures hellish Dust from the fibers creeps into the body Exports go to India. The neighboring country is the world's largest producer of jute, but they still need imports to supplement their own harvest. Products include sacking, delicate textiles, and a burlap, sometimes called hessian. Natural jute fabrics may not be very soft, but they are durable and highly breathable. Production manager Mohammad Rahman tells us that the material was already being used in the 18th century in Germany, in the region of present-day Hesse. Hessian muloto Germany theke utpoti uno ek shomai. The so-called Hessian goes back to Germany, where soldiers' uniforms used to be made of jute. Germany the This was then adopted by the British army. And they then called the fabric Hessian. Over 800 companies in Bangladesh now manufacture jute products and that number is growing. awareness of jute's environmental sustainability could be created worldwide global interest would really help say the hisley farmers germany is one of the pioneers in the industrial revolution if they were to import jute from our country and sign deals with the government we could produce more of the golden fiber and supply it. It would inspire us to harvest more, and a lot of farmers would come forward to cultivate jute. The main challenge, I think, is the price fluctuation. There's no certainty. If the government put a system in place to guarantee that it would buy the jute, as it already does with rice, then I think this would mitigate the risks. Will used jute, not plastic, make a comeback? 
The Hisley farmers hope so. But it's up to others to make it happen. Until then, Afaz will continue farming as best he can. Today, he finds himself at the market in the evening. When I get a good harvest and earn a good amount of money, I buy sweets for the children at home. I say to myself, eat more, don't think about money today. The harvest that brings in the most money makes me the happiest. When I sell my harvest at the market, I forget all the hard work. It motivates me to keep working. And then I am even happier. Thank you.